Hello again, and I'm the wine guy, and I'm here at Menzendorf once again. We're looking at Champagne Bollinger, and I'm lucky to have here Clement Garnier from. Morning, uh, and you're the uh, marketing director of, uh, oh, of Bollinger. Of Bollinger yeah. Yes, fantastic. So, Clement, um, I'm really excited to uh, taste a couple of your things. Can you just give us a bit of background on Bollinger and why people should be drinking this wonderful champagne? So, Bo Bollinger. Bollinger is uh, an historical brand. Uh, 1829 so it's really one of the major brand international brand um, in champagne uh, and of course the, the real specificity of our wine the expertise of Bollinger is barrel fermentation and even if our non-vintage champagne and in our vintage champagne we are talking about barrel fermentation that's really the great key elements of differentiation for, for Bollinger and, well, the, and, and the reason and why you have to drink it. And how, how many other champagne houses do that? Are, are you only one out of a great number? Or? Now some growers are, are doing also barrel fermentation but there's really two major brands doing barrel fermentation, Bollinger and Krug but with smaller quantities. Okay. And, uh, and what would this do to this overall style of the wine? What would people expect from this barrel fermentation within the champagne? Vinosity, the nerdy part of the wine, and also the ability of the wine to age because it's a very low oxidation process. Okay, great. Okay, and we're going to taste the, the special cuvee. Special cuvee. Um, talk us through the special cuvee. So now, Bollinger special cuvee, which is the non vintage of the house, really, certainly the king of the non vintage. It's everything about Pinot Noir 60% of Pinot, 25 Chardonnay, and 15 Meunier. So it's, a, it's a, a wine aging during three years on the lease, on the cellar of Bollinger. Uh, and it's a multi-vintage, that means that we blend different harvests. Here is the harvest 06 plus the harvest 05. And plus with of wine, and this is another key element of differentiation of Bollinger, with of wine that we keep in magnums at Bollinger. So very nice color, already a, a quite, a, quite gold, pronounced gold, but uh, you, you will see after the difference with, uh, with La Grande Année. I'm going to pay you a compliment, Clement. Tell me. Because at the school, we often, when we do a sparkling wine tasting, we ask people, what's your favourite champagne? What do you go and pick? And many people say Bollinger. And they put it right at the top. And I know this has put a smile on your face, of course, but why would that be? Why are they likely to go for Bollinger? What is it that makes them stand out above other champagne houses we won't mention because we might upset uh, someone you went to school with but uh, let's uh, let's see what your answer is in, in my opinion it's really the, the spirit of the house that we keep for many years it's still a family house we are free to make the wine that we love so we keep our lines and keep going on with nerdy wine vinosity long time process you know we are not in a hurry in, at Bollinger we take the time to make the wine that we love and perhaps some of my, of my competitors do not have this uh, this time uh, in, in front of them you know. okay oh. well let's, let's have let's have a taste shall we you can see there's, there's the color so um in comparison to some of the uh, other great champagnes you can find, um, what are we looking for in terms of uh, on the nose for Bollinger and in terms of the different characteristics you get on the palate? You are looking about power. Everything is about power. Vinovity of the wine really is the pure expression of the Pinot Noir. It's 60% of Pinot coming exclusively from Grand and Premier Cru, even for a non-vintage. More than 85% of the grapes, including in, the, in this non-vintage, are from Grand and Premier Cru, and also coming from the own vineyard of Bollinger, because Bollinger owned a vineyard of more than 164 hectares, which is very rare in Champagne, even if they are very big vineyards at, at Etanger too. And we're, <laughs> we're expecting things like um, reddish fruits, uh, are we looking at sort of uh, stone fruit characteristics? Richness, spices. Um, nutty part. Uh, no, it's very rich, very complex for an unvintage. And would you say this is a, a champagne that you kick back with uh, in the garden, or is this a, more of a food-based champagne? I know you're going to say everything, but yeah, if you, if you if you yeah. had to if you had to pick one sort of uh, key sort of no, style, it's 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 a very nice champagne, special cuvee, very nice champagne for the aperitif, but not during the summer. You know, it's it's more wine for autumn or for winter. Mm -hmm. But after it's 
because it's very rich, of course, it's the one of gastronomy. But that's brilliant marketing because, of course, we don't have a summer in England. So you're saying that it goes all year round for us. <laughs> it's not true at all. I was in Oxford this morning because I had a dinner with some student at Christ Church College. And, you know, the weather was so marvellous and it's raining in Paris. So you are lying. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's, that's fantastic. Yes, salut. So, and you've noticed, perhaps, we just launched uh, at the London Wine Fair this new shape of bottle. We, we decide to give a, a, a new packaging to, to Bollinger. It's not a revolution, you can see the, the former bottle. But we decided to have now this shape that will decline also for Alves, Magnums, even Zero Brands, and for Special Cuvée, and the Rosé, and all the range of Bollinger. So it's the new brand identity of Bollinger okay, that fantastic. you can show today. Wow. And that's going to move us quite nicely on to um, really what, what would be called uh, a flagship style of Bollinger, and that's their Grandanet, I believe we're going to try, yes, if we can. So uh, Grandanet, we, we are very lucky with this vintage. Uh, O2 is certainly one of the best vintage of the last decades. The, the balance between acidity and potential alcohol was really great. 10 degree, 9.2 for the acidity, really a great vintage. Uh, according to Mathieu Kaufmann, the cellar master of Bollinger, it's certainly his best vintage, even better than the 96. You know. There we go. I feel quite privileged now to be uh, to be tasting this Grand Anay, this 2002. Here you are. And uh, is this a uh, same grape mix, uh, Clement, or are we looking at something different? No, so it's, it's totally different. Uh, we are talking about exclusively Grand and Premier Cru, 100% Grand Cru and Premier Cru. 70% coming from the vineyard of Bollinger, not from our uh, different suppliers also, yep. because we are, of course, sourcing some other grapes, but 70% coming from our own vineyard. Totally 100% barrel fermentation. That is the key points difference with special cuvee. Special cuvee is around 30% is 100%. Of course a very long aging process on the leaves, 11 years. This one has been disgorged in, in February, so it's 11 years on the leaves. And you know, you can see this very particular neck because during the aging process on the leaves, the bottle is caught with a natural cork in order really to obtain a very, very, very low and small tiny oxidation of okay. the wine so it's yeah it's not we are not talking it's one cross over one step further and did you mention the grape mix on this the grape mix is 60 percent pinot noir really the backbone of the bollinger style and 40 percent chardonnay okay well let's let's give it a bit of a taste I've, I've already had a taste i couldn't help myself but wonderful on the nose um, and, and as Clément said, behind Bollinger, even the special cuvée, there's a bit of that power and a bit of that depth. But what you've got here with the Grand Anais is, I think, that, that power again. Power again. But, but a bit of elegance coming through as well. Elegance to very, very fine bubble. Uh, you know, something very delicate to the palate, very smooth. Uh, it's really great wine. This is a wine of gastronomy. It's not a wine for the aperitif. It's, it's a wine you can, you can enjoy. With I, I don't know. I think I might be able to enjoy a large glass of this on its own. But then that's just me, and I can do that with many wines. <laughs> no. Of course, I will, I will enjoy it on its own also, but it's really a great, great wine for gastronomy. Perfect match with cheese, perfect match with Comté. Comté all, cheese. Comté cheese, Beautiful. All, par, all Parmigiano, or, or all Swiss Gruyère. Very, very good match. Gruyère, all Parmigiano, Comté, French Comté cheese would be a perfect match. Uh, Grand with Donnay. Grand Donnay. I'm getting hungry now and it's not even lunchtime, Clement. That's your fault. So, uh, I'm so sorry, we don't, we don't have anything here. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you should have some Comte, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you very much, Clement. Thank you. Um, cheers. Cheers. Salut. Salut. Thank you.